Okay, my name's Niels, and we are in week eight of lockdown. This is my report on my experience of lockdown. And I'm a musician. I play the guitar. I've been a musician for 45 years. And I've gone from doing 200, 300 gigs a year to doing no gigs a year. And actually, I'm rather wallowing in it. I don't have to go anywhere. Um, I've got loads to do about the house. I'm not too worried about money. I've got a pension and uh, I'm getting some money back from HMRC, hopefully. I haven't applied for it yet, but there you go. And it's enabled me to indulge myself in my passion for luthery, which is uh, the making of instruments, uh, and in my case, guitars. And I have made a few guitars in my life. When I was a student at art school, because I went to art school, I didn't study music. Um, I made three guitars off the hoof. Here's, uh, here's one of them. That's me at the Cambridge Folk Festival in 1973 with my first guitar I made. Uh, here's another one. Uh, I'm a little bit older there. And yet another one. I'm pretty hirsute in all those pictures, but uh, slightly darker. I've picked up quite a few guitars over the years, over those 45 years. Um, some of them are better than others, they're all over the house, some up here in the loft, some in the office, some in the bedroom, some downstairs. Uh, not all of them are brilliant, some of them have been awaiting repairs for years. So I thought this would be a great time to do something about all that, get them in the workshop, sort them out. So that's what lockdown has meant for me. Now I play gypsy jazz quite a lot, amongst other things. But it's a style that's, uh, for those who don't know it, it's kind of uh, a European version of American jazz, but played on guitars and violins, mainly st stringed instruments. And it's very popular amongst a lot of younger guitarists these days. And uh, the consummate guitar for playing that sort of music is um, a guitar that was specially designed in the 1930s by a, an Italian luthier and uh, classical guitarist actually called Mario Macaferri. Um, he did a deal with Selmers in Paris to build a guitar he designed, which, um, and here he is in his workshop, and uh, here he is playing one of his guitars. A fine guitarist and a fine luthier, very inventive, but this guitar he invented had a really a strident cutting sound that could cut through the other instruments in the band. So it was very uh, popular and it was made famous by Django Reinhardt. The Selma factory only turned out about 400 of those guitars and the prices, if you get an original now, they're 15, 30,000 quid. But um, a lot of people making copies, like this one, this is made by Louis Paternot in France. Um, but this is the poor man's Selma. <laughs> it's uh, made out of very cheap wood and rather thrown together. Uh, I bought this last year in Brighton on, uh, on uh, not eBay, uh, the Facebook thing, Marketplace. And it had a sunken front, it had a horrible cracked fingerboard, the strings were really high. So I thought, let's do something with this, because I know that these guitars actually, even though they're thrown together, they can sound pretty good, pretty damn fine. So I set to in my workshop. When I was asked to do this video, of my lockdown project. I was already halfway through this, so uh, the video kind of starts halfway through, but I, I did take some photographs. So I'll just, um, I'll just talk through that bit. And uh, this is how I did it. So the first thing I had to do was get the front off, the old front. But to do that, of course, you have to take off the fingerboard, because that's over the top. So I did that with, uh, with the old iron. Heat it up, melt the glue, this comes off, and then go around there with a palette knife. 
very hairy. So this is the old front. I took it off with a hot pallet knife around the edge, melt the glue. Uh, I thought it was solid spruce originally because it's got quite a nice spruce veneer on it, but it's plywood. Plywood and it's really not good for a guitar front. Uh, best we've got to use solid wood, but this is ply. See where the braces went there. One, two, three, four. And it had a rosette round the sand hole, which I took out and used on the new front. It's a piece of rubbish, really. There you go, looks nice though. Hang it on the wall. But first things first, to sharpen all the tools, all the chisels, all the plain blades, get them sharp enough to shave you. Yikes, that sharp now. So there she is as she came into my hands, looking rather sorry for herself. Nice colour though. So I made a new front, a new fingerboard you can see there on the left. Uh, all braced up, ready to go. And oh, I made all those spool clamps out of beech dowel and threaded rod and wing nuts. Took me ages. And then... Okay, so I'll put a new front on this guitar. Glued it up a couple of days ago. And now... I've got to fit purfling around the edge and the binding just to finish off the edges and it's rather tricky because uh, I had to make my own tool. Here's my tool that I made, it's called a grammel. It's a bit of wood and it's got a little, um, a little blade in there you can adjust the depth, tighten it down, and drop it. And then you go around the edges, thus, cuts away the wood. And then you have to chisel that little groove out. And then you put this purfling in, which is like stuff little laminated bit of uh, black and white wood. I've got to glue that in now. Glue that in. I'm using good old tape to, um, to hold it in while the glue dries. So let's see how this works. So I'm just doing a dry run. I'm starting at this end. This is quite a tight curve. It doesn't bend very well. I had to bend that with uh, with some steam. It's actually uh, split just here, but I'll have to glue that back. And then it goes around there. And uh, I'll cut it there and we'll do the same around the top. Coming round to the back there. So I'm just taking a very sharp chisel and just touching up the edges there a bit so it's a nice clean edge, especially tricky in this tight curve. Just applying the glue. Do this in stages. Using my finest artist's brush. up afterwards. Okay, and now for the tricky bit. Let's get that in there. And There. 
holds. Squeezing glue out there. Ah, oh, it's going well so far. Oh, yeah, it's going terribly well. There. it just there before the middle because the tailpiece goes there and I'm going to inlay a little block in there to help take the strain so it doesn't damage the purfling there. So I've got edging in there, I've got all the purfling all round. Now I'm just going to Plane all that down because it's sticking up a bit. This black bit is plastic on the outside. It's a bit proud of the sides. So I'm going to have to sand that all down. But we'll get there. Now, let's put this little strip of ebony in there. That's going to go in there just to take the strain of the tailpiece. And that's a bit of ebony, and it's, it's an old piano key from my box of old black piano keys. All ebony, very useful. So, there we are, that'll go there. going in here. I'm just going to glue this in with some impact adhesive. So, this is called a truss rod, and it goes in the neck, and it's adjusted with this Allen key, and when you tighten it up, it bends this rod here, and as it's set in the neck, it pulls the neck back against the string tension. So I'm just putting it in, in this channel that I just cut in this neck. Thus, oh, and the fingerboard goes on top of that. How about that? And this is my highly technical jig uh, that I use to guide my router when I cut. It's a specially made, custom made piece of kit, and I'm going to throw it away now. So, I've got the truss rod in here. That's it there, running down the neck. And you adjust it with this key here. I'm ready to put this uh, fingerboard on, which will go on there. 
and then uh, leave that to dry, then I can put the frets in. Beautiful. Okay, I need this fret wire to be a little bit more curved to match the curve of the uh, fingerboard. So I've made this homemade bending contraption. I just push that through there and I get a nice radius on it. Just like that. Ah, just getting all the crud out from these slots with an old hacksaw blade. So there's nothing stopping the frets from seating. So far so good. Frets all in. Now using the file to split the edges. Time to level the frets. Finally, why wool? Here we are, nice shiny fret. All done. Beautiful, clean fretboard. So, I'm just finishing the uh, a black at the side and the neck. Here. That's all been lacquered and uh, I've done the neck. <coughs> with lacquer, I'm going to finish the front with um, True Oil, which is uh, actually a gunstock finish, but it works great on guitars. But you have to get a really nice, flawless surface to wipe it on. This is what I'm doing now. So here we are, True Oil, last year's t-shirt. And on it goes. So now I've got this guitar, put the last bit of lacquer on there, polished it all up, put the machine heads on there, I've got a nice new fretboard, look at that, woo! I've put a different tailpiece on there, a nice cell there, and I'm going to use a floating bridge like that will go somewhere there and now I'm going to put the strings on see what it sounds like
Up at dawn, sleepy and yawning, still the taste of wine. Then I remember you're mine, and I've got a world that's fine. What's before me, routines that bore me, punch the clock at eight. But what a lucky guy I am, I've got a world that's great. Adam Bomb, Cape Canaveral. False alarms, half the universe is up in arms So I flip a little do till I'm holding you What's the hassle? Out by the castle, we can live like kings If we're together forever, we've got a world that swings Atom bombs, Cape Canaveral, false alarms. Half the universe is up in arms. So I flip a little do till I'm holding you. What's a hassle? Out by the castle, we can live like king. If we're together forever, I've got a world, you've got a world, we've got a world that swings. We've got a world. That swings to do do 